Welcome back to 90s week here on Final Fan TV. I hope you're enjoying this little series uh, as we travel back in time. Now, Vinny, we're traveling back in time even uh, to 1994. So in 1994, it was two years after the uh, release of the previous entry. Uh, so this one actually took a two year, you know, two year development span. Whereas and they also, were, yeah, also two years after the release of Vinny. After the release of Vinny, and I, I and I was I was almost I almost thought of it. Like, I thought of it. Trust me, chat. You don't have to correct me right now. I get it. It's actually two, I was said two years development time for this game. It was two years since the release on. Uh, like the North America uh, release, okay. So in between that, they did release Final Fantasy V in Japan. I forgot. These numbers are throwing me off. This is indeed Final Fantasy III in North America. So two years after Final Fantasy II. Okay, I'm sorry. I'm, I'm just I'm just getting all my numbers mixed up. So the sixth installment would release in Japan on April second, nineteen ninety four, but would be titled Final Fantasy. Three in North America, releasing on September 30th, 1994. And, uh, Vinny, we have a commercial for you we're going to look at. We actually have two. Uh, one that I found that was the North American commercial for Final Fantasy 3 and requested by our Twitch viewer right now, Drakey C, um, says to check out the Japanese version, which is going to be nude for us. Like, we haven't, we yep. haven't, we haven't seen it. I haven't it. seen it. So we're going to react to that, and then we're also going to take a look at an interview that was conducted for a Electronic Gaming Monthly. Um, so that's that's kind of cool. Back in 1994. So let's get to it, Benny. Let's take a look All at right. uh, let's take a look at the commercials first. Let's take a look at these commercials first. Here we go. So Final Fantasy III commercial for for the North America audience. Here we go. Let's let's back it up a little bit. We got Final Fantasy III casting already. Let's go. Okay, kid, show me what you got. Yeah, right. Next. Yes. <laughs> Next. Ooh, scary. Ooh. Next. 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 Final Fantasy 3. Do you have what it takes? Final Fantasy 3 from Squaresoft. Next. <laughs> So it looks Did like, you get uh, the Final were... Fantasy 3 vibes from? <laughs> I mean, <laughs> story uh, with a very, like very were... deep story, though. It looked like they were trying to advertise a survival horror game <laughs> rather than like a, <laughs> you know, like a zombies ate my neighbors type of game instead of. When we play Final Fantasy, uh, when we play Final Fantasy 6 on stream, we the the Moogle, the Mog, we have to give that voice. We have to give them that voice. Like, next. What, like a, yeah, who's like next? A, Come on in like here. A, uh, like a Danny DeVito? Yeah. Like a soft-serve Danny DeVito? <laughs> yeah, Drakey, like a Danny DeVito mod. Like a De <laughs> Who's next? Bring him in here. Oh, my God. So I really got, from that commercial, I was really getting the, the, the feel of that really uh, deep uh, story that is told through Final Fantasy VI. Of, you know, life and death and, and tragedies and, like... Didn't you get that? Didn't you get the sense from that commercial? Like, yeah. Uh, the the only thing that would have made it better would be a doom train. If like a <laughs> doom train just came just into his barging office, barging through the office door, that would have been amazing. Like the Kool Aid Man, just mm -hmm. like boom. That would have been more '90s than the commercial itself, Vinny. Dude, right, we could have, I, we could have picked we could have pitched that idea. You needed more right. train. You'll spend more your whole trains. summer playing this. Are you? Do you have what it takes? <laughs> To play Final Fantasy 3? Do you have what it takes? Oh my god. <laughs> and, you know, funny enough, no, I didn't have what it took to play Final Fantasy 3. Mm. The American release of Final Fantasy... No, the Japanese release Final Fantasy 3. Yeah, Final Fantasy 3, we didn't see that. Like, the actual Final Fantasy 3 until, like, 2006 or 5 or something on the 3DS, man. Uh, right, So, and I did not like it. Yeah, we're going. Oh, we're talking. We went to the future, Vinny. Are we from the future, bro? Like we're what? from. Uh, we're in that infinity time loop. So we How just we exist know? among time. We exist. So we we go forward and bring stuff back, and, oh, it back, and then so go good. forward, and then we bring it back. Dude, we're writing that story. I don't care, man. And if I if anybody huh? freaking watches this episode and writes that story, I know. I'll know you just straight up ripped it from me. You know what I mean? That's a story we're writing, dude. 
It's so, so good. <laughs> Anyways, um, <laughs> yeah, we know that in 2000, uh, that, uh, yeah, the, the Final Fantasy 3 finally comes to North America. But this is what we got in Super Nintendo, which is actually Final Fantasy 6. So let's take a look at Final Fantasy 6, the Japanese commercial. Now, we've never seen this one before. Because this was uh, suggested by our reviewer, Drake E.C., to take a look at the Japanese commercial for Final Fantasy VI. Let's take a look at it, man. And already I can see the Morgul's like, I'm walking here. This is a crosswalk and I'm walking. All right, here we go. Let's see what we got. Oh, snap. Magic tech armor? Actual gameplay. You made your night. Final Fantasy VI. Oh, what? Super Famicom Day has by Square. Yo. Were they in a different time period? Like, was America just, like, in a different, like, they were doing their own thing. Like, America's doing their own thing right now with the, with the edginess, with, the, like, the the crashing through walls. Get out of here. Get out of my office. This was a good trailer, man. Like, it had the, it had some sweet music to it, man. It had, it showed off the gameplay. It, it had somebody in cosplay as Terra, which is so cool. I like that. Magic track armor right in the middle of the street. Um, I love this trailer, Drakey. I love this trailer. So thank you for suggesting now, it. Um, I've been trying to find something for a uh, block sheep. Remember okay. how I mentioned, I think on our last episode, how there was a, a theory that Final Fantasy 4 and Final Fantasy 6 are connected. Like the people from Final Fantasy 4 are what ended up turning into the espers or something. I'm trying to yeah, I've heard find where I read that, that again, mm -hmm. um, for you. But, uh, so... You may proceed. I was just yeah, maybe we'll, letting you know that I was searching for something. Maybe we should do like a, it's like one of those like uh, you, you're scrolling through YouTube and you see those crazy thumbnails, and uh, and you know it's just a, you know it's a crazy theory, but you're gonna click into it anyway. Uh, maybe we'll do. It. <laughs> but I, I really enjoyed this one. Uh, I really enjoyed this trailer. Actually, this is this is a really good one. Let's watch it again. Let's watch it one more time here, man. Like I love that they have the the magic tech armor. This gets me hyped, dude. This gets me hype. But man, they got an entire audience reacting to it? The Doom Train is there? What is that? Whoa! The airship breaking in half? What's going on? I want to play the game! And look at this! A real life person as Terra! Now I have visuals! Now I know what she looks like! Th that was great! I know. This it, had an appropriate amount of train, 10 out of 10. <laughs> that was right, Simon. Appropriate amount of train. <laughs> um, yeah. Wow, that's, it, that's, that's amazing. All right, I like that one. So would you like to read an interview from, from 1994 by Electronic Gaming Monthly? Uh, this one, here, I'm going to zoom in so that way you guys can read along if you'd like to. Actually, you might not be able to, to read that well. There we go. Okay, <clears throat> so let's let's read this one. This is EGM's, uh, which is Electronic Gaming Monthly's knob, your ace editor in Japan, arranged a special interview with Mr. Yasuki Hirata. I'm so sorry about that. The general manager of publicity department in Square Co. Ltd. Guys, this was before Square Enix. This was before the merge. This is back when they were called Square Co. LTD, and their video games had the Square Soft uh, logo on them. Uh, that was their brand for the video games. In Japan, you have already released six official Final Fantasy games. When were uh, when were these released, and how well did they sell? So, we might even be get some insight right here, Vinny. An orig the original Final Fantasy was launched in December 1987. Approximately 600,000 were sold in Japan. The NES version sold better, uh, registering sales of approximately 700,000. The Famicom, uh, which is the NES, the Famicom 
Uh, Final Fantasy 2 and Final Fantasy 3 were respectively launched in December 1988 and April 1990. Their sales were approximately 800,000 and 1.4 million units, respectively. <clears throat> These were never translated. Final Fantasy IV, our first Super Famicom RPG, registered sales at approximately 1.5 million upon its release in July 1990. Final Fantasy IV was translated as the Super NES Final Fantasy II, which sold about 300,000 units. So right there you can see, man. You can see that difference. Um, if... Did it, they didn't give you any numbers for the for the North American release, did they? No, they didn't. Okay, so yeah, for three hundred thousand in, in in North America, Final Fantasy V was released at the end of nineteen ninety two and has approximately sold uh, two point four million units in Japan. Um, I imagine, right? Yeah. The newest title, Final Fantasy IV, was released in April of this year. It has become our biggest hit ever, with sales reaching approximately two point fifty five million units. We hope the Super NES Final Fantasy 3 will echo the success of Final Fantasy 4 in America. Oh man, th this gets really confusing. E even the interview. He's talking about Final Fantasy 3 being Final Fantasy 6 uh, and Final Fantasy 6 in America. I think I said 4, my bad. Um, in total, the entire Final Fantasy series has registered sales of approximately 9.25 million units in Japan and 2.2 million units overseas. So close to 11.5 million units all told um incidentally we also repackaged final fantasy one and two together on a single famicom cartridge earlier this year in japan so really cool stuff there if, to give you those numbers to see how well the game was started doing you know what i mean like it started off with only six hundred thousand, and then you know like gets over to the seven hundred thousand. you know what i mean like they're just moving right on up mm -hmm. um or unless if they mean the NES version, that might actually mean the American version of Final Fantasy One sold better. Ooh. Um, than the Japan. I believe. I'm not sure. I don't know. The because he's referring to NES, not uh, Famicom. So if it was Japan, it would be Famicom, not NES. So maybe it sold better in North America, and then they released, which doesn't make sense. Why they wouldn't capitalize on that with Final? F ah, never mind. The, the release order is way whack. Never mind. Um, so anyways, besides the official titles, there's also, um, or are there so-called Gaiden story, uh, side story games that have spun off from the series? Uh, the Super NES Final Fantasy Mystic Quest comes to mind. Oh, okay, I see what they're referring to. Uh, just more units, more units. Um, Mystic Quest was released in America long before the Japanese version was translated from it. All told... Uh, it sold approximately 800,000 units. Okay, cool, cool. I I'm so happy for all these units, but let's let's skip ahead a little bit. Do you plan to make other Gaiden-type games? Nothing has been decided. Is there any plan to release uh, the yet untranslated Final Fantasy games, although it may be difficult to do? Um, so this we're, now we're talking about untranslated games. Let's see what he has to say about that. Um, because of the market conditions... Oh, yeah, okay. Uh, maybe hard to do with 8-bit Final Fantasy oh my god 21, 21. this guy's really oh, messing man, up man this guy's from the future wow Final this Fantasy from this, the dude future. he's in the he's in the 1000 years ahead of us man the loop is continuing apparently Final we didn't proofread in the 90s either <laughs> before releasing to the dude, masses this is the kind of article that we get though you know what I mean this is like it's so interesting like we're just Hey, we want to let you know that the game is selling well. Let me tell you about our units and, you know, like, just just how much it's sold, you know. Like it would be a shame. in here. Yeah, yeah. It would be a shame if American gamers couldn't experience the outstanding Final Fantasy V. At present, we haven't come to any decisions. Um, so Final Fantasy VI is widely hailed as the best ever in the series. Will the Super NES version be altered in any way from the SFC version other than translating the text. For example, the Super NES Final Fantasy II was made considerably, and considerably simpler to play than the original SFC Final Fantasy IV. Will such balance adjustments be made? Uh, we haven't made particularly noteworthy changes. We feel that the game has been designed to enable virtually all gamers to adjust configurations to suit their playing styles. What do you think, Vinny? You think that was uh, accurate for Final Fantasy VI? 
Oh, yeah. Um, the, the party size, I think, lends to that. How mm. you didn't have to play one specific way. There were so many playable characters that, you know, there was a little bit of something for everybody. Yeah. So this is the first time, it looks like, that they're like, hey, we decided that, you know what, maybe uh, maybe those, uh, those Americans can handle it now. You know? Maybe they're not so bad. Maybe they're not so dumb after all. They got this. They can do it. Um, including planning, how long did Final Fantasy VI take, take to produce? We spent about a year and a half. A year and a half. A year and a half to develop Final Fantasy VI. That blows my mind. Mm-hmm. It's insane, dude. Now we get now we get one every decade. Blows my mind. A year and a half to develop a game with a story such as six with the with all the mechanics of six. Mm-hmm. Insane. Um, how many people were involved in the game's production? In total, about thirty. <laughs> there are five planners, five programmers, ten graphic artists, and two music people. <clears throat> the rest are assistants. You can literally list it in a two-sentence paragraph. Actually, yes, two-sentence paragraph. They list three sentence. They, they listed the entire staff. <laughs> the entire staff. <laughs> <clears throat> That's insane, dude. Are development teams always composed of identical members? Or do key people assemble separate development teams for each title? We assemble a new team for each title. However, the main people remain cons- constant, including our vice president, Hironobu Sakaguchi, who is the driving force behind the series. <clears throat> we are always astounded by the superb music in Final Fantasy. Who is the composer? We don't know his name yet, Vinny. The world will know his name. The man right. responsible for all the Final Fantasy music is... Nobuo Yunatsu. Not you. <laughs> this is going to throw me off. It's not Yunatsu. Oh, God. This is just so bad. Um, our resident maestro. Wow. Nobuo Yunatsu, guys. <laughs> what is his name? It's Yunatsu. In Japan, the soundtracks of Final Fantasy titles are always uh, are all available on CD. How big is the lineup? Are these music CDs popular? CDs of all original soundtracks have been released uh, for the Final Fantasy series. Besides these, arranged versions based on the original soundtracks, such as the orchestral arrangements, have also been released for every title. The three CD Final Fantasy VI original soundtrack has been our biggest seller to date, with sales topping 200,000 units. That's right. Video game music was still good back then we're talking super nintendo people buying original soundtracks for super nintendo games it's final fantasy baby i mean other than super mario like of, like super mario still has one of the best osts of all time I, w- I i don't care super mario love it um so i'll give him that but other than that like i don't i don't just uh, back in that era back in that time video game music did not it wasn't on par with final fantasy 6 or final fantasy in general i don't think <laughs> um but that's not to say that you know video games didn't have stellar soundtracks like donkey kong country also had a really good soundtrack too but so let's not forget that um and speaking of which donkey kong C- country is in on is on the front cover of this magazine um the evolution of game systems have been amazing has been amazing our system improvements based on feedback from fans to a certain extent all system enhancements and features are based on the original ideas of our development staff okay cool final fantasy 6 appears to have established an incredibly high standard of quality here we go although it is premature And me too when I talk about Final Fantasy VII, if you know what I'm saying, dude. Can Final Fantasy VII keep up with the series tradition of besting the game before it? Let's see what he says. Our development staff upholds a policy of always using the best techniques available at the time. Each development team therefore aims to make a game better than, yeah, 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 the one before it. Of course. And you guys did. 
I know. I know. Final Fantasy VI, Final Fantasy VII, it's a, it's a point of contention. Which one's better for me? It's seven. In Japan, a Final Fantasy anime series was produced. Which game... Uh, which game is the story based on? Will it be released in America? The story is set in the world of Final Fantasy V. That's right. Did you know about that, Vinny? Did you? Uh, know? Yeah. 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 Uh, so about 150 years later, we are presently considering releasing it in America. I don't know if they ever did. I don't think they don't ever think released so. it in America. Um, and I honestly have not watched it. I know what it is. I've seen it. Mm -hmm. is, what it is. I've never watched it. Um, is there a possibility of seeing Final Fantasy titles on the Ultra 64, which was the code name for the Nintendo 64 at the time, and or other next generation systems? We are evalu evaluating the possibilities. On a purely hypothetical level, we think that the odds are slightly better for Ultra 64 than other new game systems. Are they though? Are they? Are they slightly better? Never tell me the odds, you know what I mean? Because let me tell you, Nintendo will tell them, you know, Nintendo will, will, will tell them, tell Square what they can do. And Square says, you ain't telling me what to do. You know what I mean? And we're going to get that in just a moment because it's going to get nasty. It's going to get nasty, Vinny. All right, finally, how about a few words for Square fans in America? We will stand by our policy of consistently making games that betray, that betray your expectations for the better count on us dude i've heard this before betray your expectations like is maybe this is like a, a thing like people say a lot i don't i never really heard it until just recently when i read a final fantasy origin stranger of paradise interview like it was just like the other day betray your ex whoops oh watch out watch out watch out watch out watch out, watch out. <laughs> here we go we're going we're going for oh, a ride simpsons rpg where did we go oh no Oh, you, you, no. you passed it. You only went back a couple pages. You Did passed I? it. Anyway, yeah. betray your expectations. All right, that's like that's a thing for me that I didn't really hear until recently with this with the Stranger of Paradise. Um, we'll 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 see it eventually. Um, but, but let me see what's happening here, man. Why why, why can't we we, we want to see this? We want to see it. I mean, we're at the last page anyway. Hopefully, we're, I mean, like, like my internet's obviously not out. But anyways, I didn't see Betray Your Expectations until just recently with, with Stranger of Paradise. And they said, um, you know, betray your expectations, but in a good way. And they literally say it right here in, with this interview. That's cool. It, it's it like might, poetry. It, might just, be, it, it might just be a square thing. Hmm. Betray Your Expectations oh. for the Better it seems to be a square thing for sure. Um, so we're going to load this up one more time because we're going to finish out the interview, which is literally just a sentence left. Um, so let me get back to it. Oh, my Lord. <laughs> you keep clicking the wall. It's so... Okay, okay, here we go, here we go. Yeah, I mean, you know what? Make the, make you, count on us to make you go well. That's it. That's the end yeah. of the interview. I had to find it. Um, m magic? She used magic so there was just you know use the little picture here um uh, but yeah man that's a a pretty interesting article i thought like an interesting interview besides all of the numbers but i mean that kind of gave us a little mm -hmm. insight of how the game you know how final fantasy has grown for them which is cool to get the units and stuff but uh right about here they started talking about final fantasy 7 and that's up next mm -hmm. Vinny. Because we are um, about to enter the year 1997. Um, so is there anything you want to talk about before we move on? Yeah, I found uh, I found the thing I read about the connection between 4 and 6 um, mm. for block sheet. Uh, it's actually real quick. Okay. Um, so it says that some fans believe that the Americanized numbering of Final Fantasy 4 and Final Fantasy 6 as Final Fantasy 2 and Final Fantasy 3 is more appropriate than people realize. Some evidence suggests that the War of the Magi that happened a thousand years ago in Final Fantasy 6 was actually the war that takes place in Final Fantasy 4, a callback that makes Final Fantasy 6 look like a sequel to Final Fantasy 4 just a thousand years later. 
Fans also suggest that the warring triad depicted in the statues in Final Fantasy VI was actually the three Lunarians from Final Fantasy IV. It's a lot to unpack, but astute observers have noticed that there are also similarities in the geography of both the game's world maps. That's all it gives. Um, I'm sure there's uh, more information on it, hmm. but that is what I was referring to in the previous episode or a few episodes back about how um, 4 and 6 are actually connected in, in some way, and that's why it's numbered Final Fantasy 2 and Final Fantasy 3. Okay. <clears throat> Very cool, man. Thanks for that. Um... I mean, I don't, I don't, I don't know about all that. I don't know. It's just like a cool, fun fan theory there. But uh, yeah, so here we go. I mean, it's a fun. It's I just like how some people think Final Fantasy X is Final Fantasy VII, right? That the, the universes is, are connected. Yeah, yeah. Yeah. How Final Fantasy X came before uh, Final Fantasy VII. There's right? a lot of. I mean, there is, there is a lot of like fun Easter eggs that that support that theory. But uh, there we go. Let's talk about Final Fantasy VII. We're all eager to do it. Um, now, the '90s at this point in time, it was. Oh wait, let me get. Let me set this up. All right, that's the end of the video for Final Fantasy VI. We'll see you in the next one for Final Fantasy VII. <laughs> <laughs>